the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration wherever you are in the comfort of your homes. Just know that we are praying for you and we're asking God to guide and protect you in this time of uncertainty. Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent and in the readings of today, especially in the first reading, God says to Samuel, do not judge by appearances. Don't. Sometimes in life, we judge by what we see, what we perceive, the circumstances of our life. But God is saying to Samuel, you must look beyond appearances and see what God is doing. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7, that we walk by faith in the Son of God and not by sight, not by the circumstances, but by faith in the Son of God. And so in this moment, ask God to increase our faith, to help us, especially as we are going through these uncertain times, that our faith might be strengthened. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery worldly, let us call to mind our saints and ask the good Lord for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you heal the man who had been born blind. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you summon the sinner to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you call us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian family may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Handsome to behold and making a splendid 
appears. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Inverted pastors, he gives me repose. Beside restful water, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd there I shall not want. He guides me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your spear that gives me courage. The Lord is He's my, my shepherd, shepherd, I shall not walk. You spread the table before me in the sight of my food. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless work of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper and arise from the day the Christ will give you life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me, we have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means saint. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some say it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. 
he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others say, how can a sinful man do such things? And there was a division among them. So he said to the blind man, blind man again, what do you have to say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said, he's a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, on this first Sunday of Lent, usually before I begin my homily, I like to sing a song. And um, I just feel that I'm still in the church with all of my parishioners here with me. So, um, and I believe they are here with me in spirit, even as they are in their different homes. The steadfastness of the Lord never ceases, His mercy is never come to an end. They are new every morning, new There are things that we must do as believers. There are things that we must do as believers in times of crisis. And there are five things I want to briefly touch on. Five things we must do as believers in times of crisis. Number one is constant praise and worship of God. You see, there is something about praise and worship of God in times of crisis that drives the devil crazy and causes God to intervene. You see, the enemy expects all to be sad at this time, to be bitter, unhappy, and frustrated. But when we do the opposite, his plan is defeated. But you ask the question, how can I praise God in the midst of crisis? How can I praise God in the midst of the storm? How can I praise God in the midst of disaster? How can I praise God when everything around me is crumbling? Well, the answer is, when we praise Him in the midst of crisis, when we praise Him in the midst of the storm, we are simply acknowledging that our God is bigger than any circumstances we might be facing. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 16, when Paul and Silas praised God in the midst of crisis, the Bible says God demonstrated his power by breaking the chains that held them in bondage and freed them from the prison. That is the power of praise in the time of crisis. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when Israel was surrounded by her enemies, King Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. The Bible says, as they were singing and worshiping God, their enemies suddenly 
turned against themselves and they began to destroy each other. That is the power of praise even in the midst of crisis. In Psalm 23, in Psalm 22 verse number 3, the Bible says that God dwells in the praises of his people. No wonder in, no wonder in Psalm 34 verse 1, David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall never depart from my lips. Which means in good times I will praise him. In bad times I will praise him. In sickness I will praise him. In good health I will praise him. In the time of sorrow, chaos, and frustration, and yes, even in this time of corona pandemic, this virus, I will still praise my God. Says, I must praise God at all times because God is bigger than any circumstances. And praise causes God to intervene in our situation. The second thing we must do as believers in time of crisis is radical repentance. The Bible tells us in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 59 from verses number 1 to 2 that the hand of the Lord is not too short to save. He is not deaf to our prayers. But he says, our sins have separated us from God. In verse 3, of Isaiah 59, the prophet continues. He says, Your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice, no one pleads a case with integrity. You rely on empty arguments, alter lives. They conceive trouble and bring birth to evil. My dear friends, the bottom line is this. When you read through the scriptures carefully, especially in the Old Testament, when Israel disobeys God and deviates from the right path, God sends his prophets to warn them. If they repent, God forgives them. But if they persist in their sin and wickedness, then God allows their enemies to destroy them. But you say, oh, we are children of the New Testament. We don't live anymore under the Old Testament. Well, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7, it says, God cannot be mocked. God cannot be deceived. Whatsoever one sows, that he must reap. And in, some, in another place in the scripture, the Bible tells us, must we abound in sin so that grace may multiply? No. In our world today, we have boldly deviated from the righteous path of God. We have saturated the land with the blood of the innocents. We have boldly destroyed God's concept of marriage, family, and personhood. We have introduced all kinds of occultic and satanic worship. We have taken down the name of God from our schools and other public places and replaced it with something else. Dishonesty, hatred, racism, pride, and wickedness are all too common now. So the Bible says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So now God is calling us to radical repentance and sorrow. In this time of Lent, the church offers us the opportunity to fast and pray and ask God for mercy. In the book of the prophet Jonah chapter number 3, when the prophet was sent to preach to the Ninevites, in fact, after preaching to the Ninevites, he said, And forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. They did not argue with the prophet, no. The Bible says, they humbled themselves and repented. And in verse 3, the scripture says, When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction 
he had threatened. We need humility, my dear friends. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14, he says, Even the people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil, wicked ways. He says, Then I, the Lord, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. If we need the healing of the land from this pandemic, then radical repentance and humility is the key. We must quietly engage in sober meditation and examination of conscience. We must listen to the voice of the Lord in this period of crisis and do what He asks us to do. The third thing that we must do as believers is what I call aggressive prayer to counter wickedness in the high places. St. Paul reminds us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 12 that our battle, our fight is not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against world rulers of this present darkness and against a host of spiritual wickedness operating in high places. There are powers of wickedness operating in high places. Be it in the government, or in the music industry, or in the film industry, or in the military complexes, or even in religious circles, these powers of darkness have sold their souls to the devil, and they carry out the works of their father, which is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. They carry out secret meetings to, to cause destruction upon the human family. The Bible calls them drinkers of blood and eaters of flesh. They collaborate with demonic powers to carry out their devilish agendas. And so as believers in Jesus Christ, we must counter their oppression in the spiritual realm with aggressive prayers. The Bible says, that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. He says, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the destruction of strongholds and casting down imaginations. Jesus says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence must take it by force. I think the time to be spiritually aggressive in prayer is now. The fourth thing we must do in this time of crisis is hope and trust in God. In the first reading of today, God says to Samuel, do not judge by appearance. In the gospel reading of today, the disciples of Jesus saw a man born blind, but Jesus saw something different, that the works of God might be made manifest. You see, when we judge by appearance, we make terrible mistakes and hasty conclusions. It hinders us from seeing what God is doing. Yes, we may have to acknowledge the obvious, but we must go beyond mere appearance, and that is what is called faith. Faith in God gives birth to hope. Without faith, hope is useless. Faith, according to the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, is the evidence of things hoped for. Faith is resting on the promises of God while we wait. Faith is seeing things from God's perspective. Faith is calling into existence the things that are not as though they are. Through faith, Abraham believed that he would become the father of the nations even when his circumstances say otherwise. Through faith, Hannah rejected the notion that she cannot conceive again. Through faith, David declared that even though I walk through the dark valley, 
I shall fear no evil, for God is with me. Through faith, Jacob declared, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he will come to my rescue at the end. My dear friends, the Bible tells us that without faith, no one can please God. As believers, we must walk by faith and not by sight. The devil wants us to focus on the negative and chaotic circumstances. But God wants us to focus on him and what he can do. When Peter in the scriptures removed his focus from Jesus, the Bible says he began to sink because he focused on the storms of life, on the chaotic nature of the ocean. And then he lost his focus from Jesus who called him and he began to sing. My dear friends, we must go and trust in God, for these two shall pass away. The last thing we must do in this time of crisis, my dear friends, is to show more love for others. This is not a time to be selfish and think only about yourself and your welfare. In fact, this time of crisis will demonstrate how we love and care for each other as Christians, as believers. Think about others in this time more than yourself. It sounds strange, but that is the Christian way. Thinking about others more than we think ourselves, and God will take care of our own business. The agape love Jesus demonstrated on the cross was not for himself, but for others. This is why the Bible tells us in John chapter 15, verse number 13, Greater love has no man than these, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And so the Bible tells us, whatsoever you do to others, you have done it to Jesus. This is the time to show more love and compassion and mercy to others. Call your friends on the phone, check on them, ask them, how are you doing? You have food, these by this by this we are we are called Christians. Finally, I want to use this opportunity to thank the doctors, the nurses, first responders, and all those who are at the front line in this battle against these unsafe enemies. May God Almighty bless, guide, protect, and direct them in their work. May the blood of Jesus heal all those who have already been infected with this virus. And may the souls of those who have already died as a result of this virus, may they rest in peace. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, 
On this first Sunday of Lent, let us now present all our needs and petitions before the mercy throne of God. For the church, that we may bring to light whatever is hidden in darkness and heal the wound that have gone unnoticed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For government leaders, that they may continue their work to ensure that the well-being of the most valuable in their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For victims of extreme human right violation, those who have been abducted, tortured, or executed, and for their families and loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those preparing for the Easter sacrament, especially those in our parish, that they may walk in the light of Christ and ready the light to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty and ever-living God, we present all our needs and petitions before the throne of mercy, and we ask you to please grant them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received the one we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, know we are accepted by you, O Lord. And may I sacrifice these in your sight and place to you, Lord God. Wash me, O oh Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept these sacrifices at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as his fitting for the salvation of the whole world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, which He has led the human race that walked in darkness, into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy their bodies gates, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Denado our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that we, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless the Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.